Good afternoon all. Here's a job I've been meaning to do. These are six lead acid gel batteries paralleled up with these bus bars and charged with my kind of last remaining working PWM5 solar charge controller, one of the original ones with hot glue in the ends. And a while ago, I don't know whether you remember this, I bought these brass standoffs, some bolts, some longer bolts and some nuts to replace these steel ones which don't look too bad at the front here but at the back they've rusted really quite badly so I wanted to replace the steel ones with brass these are aluminium strips of course and then people were saying oh they'll still corrode because um, you've got dissimilar metals and potential differences well, let's see if they do. So let's start getting these old bolts and nuts off. And that of course means disconnecting my charge controller. So that light will go off because the charge controller has no power anymore. Uh, will it short if I short? No, it doesn't really matter, does it? So what I'm gonna be doing is instead of using these fairly thick uh, twin and earth copper wires, coming down from three different solar panels into three charge controllers into the battery bank. The idea really was to show that the charge controllers can be paralleled at the battery side. Now I'm going to implement my completely new strategy, which is just a very thin pair of wires to charge this battery bank on the basis that I only ever draw power from these for, I don't know, an hour a day. And then for the other 23 hours they can be charging back up via this very thin piece of wire from bigger batteries elsewhere on the system. Now let's undo these nuts and uh, whilst I've got this bus bar off I'm going to drill an extra hole at each end at this end for my thin piece of wire coming from the other batteries and at this end for a rather more permanent version of this instead of crop clips I'll use uh, connectors sort of um, crimp terminals and this is the wire that goes into the workshop so that I can power projects so this was spaced out with a nut and three washers simply to get from the battery tab out far enough that this bus bar could clear all of these uh, battery cases. Well now of course I've got these standoffs that will do that job. So I thought I'd give these a bit of a clean up while I'm at it. Scraped off the uh, foam off the top giving these tops a bit of a clean. Cleaning up down here so I can see the black and the red squares. The red ones aren't very clear are they? And uh, I thought while these are disconnected from each other, I might just run across them with a voltmeter to see if there's any of these six which are obviously completely faulty. I'll do that in a moment. Now, I can't imagine these batteries are going to be different voltages, but they've been separated now for, I don't know, half an hour or so. 13.28 on that one. On this one. 13.27 and then the other one is this one up here and that one oh that one's a bit lower 13.15 so yeah that one's dropped down a bit so they've all been cleaned up they've all had the new brass bolts and spacers put on and tightened. Now the voltages are 1310, 1324, 1314, 1312, 1326 and 1309 and I've kind of distributed them so that the two highest voltages are sort of in the middle. There's absolutely no logic to that at all. I've got a feeling this one actually was probably at this end and that's a 1312 because of the way the red has on a different colour I think because it was exposed underneath this cover 
Anyway, they're all going to get strapped in parallel again pretty soon. Just need to drill out those two bus bars. Actually, I might clean them up first. So when the aluminium case company was still in business, we used to use this stuff. Scotch Bright. I mean, it's just a plastic scouring pad. And WD-40 on the aluminium to perform the final sort of cleaning and brightening. So I thought I'd just have a bit of... Whoa, that's a big... B. Yes, a bit of nostalgia um, on these two strips. It's mainly on the insides, I think they got dirtiest. Just get these cleaned up, ready to uh, go on the new brass bolts. Ah, yes, the smell of WD 40 on polished aluminium and the dirty grey hands. That takes me back, takes me back to the days before full-time YouTube. Not really sure I want to go back there. I think I'm happy as I am. Okay, so now to reattach the newly cleaned bus bar strips and fit nuts onto the 12 bolts. Let's get that all hooked up again. Oh no, I can't. I haven't drilled the holes for the um, terminal connections at either end. Oh, I must do that next. So now that they're all connected back up with their new brass spacers and nuts, I'm just going to run across all of them testing on the actual, I believe they're lead, uh, terminal tops, the voltage across the, the batteries to make sure that they're all at the same voltage. In other words, that they're all connecting to those bus bars. Let's check it. And uh, yeah, just been across all six of those and they're all at 13.11 so it would appear they're all connected back to the bus bars now do i wire up this wire feed today or shall i leave that for another day maybe i could do a temporary wiring so i'm just going to make a temporary connection um, of this cable now this comes from the solar power wall uh, which should still have partial sun on it so that should be quite high so when I connect this that voltage should lift up 13.02 at the moment I just turn some lights on on the inside just to pull it down a little bit so let's get that connected and see if the DVM starts going up okay let's see if we can do everything with one and here put that in there oh well touching that on there should start to put it up uh, no not really that hasn't budged. Let's put the bolt through in case I'm not getting a very good connection. This is definitely negative here, isn't it? And tighten that on and uh, maybe give it some time. So negative is definitely at this end and I'm pretty certain I made black stripe negative. Uh, otherwise I suppose that wire would be getting mildly warm. So yeah, just waiting for that to lift up really, considering that um, we must have more than 13 volts at the other end. But it may not be much more than 13 volts. In fact, let's take a look. Yes, it is modulating here, so that must be 13.5 volts on this big battery. But then that's linked via a thin wire to this big battery. And then this is linked via the thin wire over to my workshop batteries and it is quite a long wire anyway it is linked only time will tell whether this is uh, being charged over that thin cable by the other batteries in the system but uh, for this retro upgrade refit whatever it's called cheerio